Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in today and thank you for your support. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about a record to die for and you definitely wanna stay tuned for this. Um, before I get started, if you're new and haven't already, we're almost at 5,000 subscribers, let's get there. Um, hit the like, subscribe, and notification button. If you're not subscribed yet, you really should be. Uh, if you like audiophile topics and uh, record reviews and comparisons, this is a good place to stop in. So this way you'll get notified of any new content that comes up and you'll be helping out the channel greatly. Um, I, also, I also want to give a shout out to another creator who's run, running a contest right now. And I've been watching his channel since uh, its inception. Um, his, name, his name is Chance and his channel is called Concert Buddy. So definitely check out his channel and his contest. It'll be linked in the description box below. Uh, Chance is a great guy. He's been very supportive of me and I'd love to give him any help I can get. He's trying to get to 500. So let's, um, let's all give him some help and check out his channel. So thank you for doing that. So this came about, this record to die for came about because of a system upgrade. I am testing out a new phono preamp. Um, I had the Emmeline Nighthawk in the uh, system for a while. Um, it was very, very good. A big upgrade over my internal phono stage. But I wanted to get something world class. And Osvaldo at Let There Be Sound, who, who had let me borrow the Nighthawk to try, suggested the Modrite 9.0 um, tube phono preamp. And I hesitated because it's priced almost at the same price as my entire turntable system. But um, I did want to make the leap into the big league uh, as far as sound reproduction. And I read every review I could of the ModRite and it's got stellar reviews everywhere. So this is in the system now. And when Oswaldo brought it over, um, he said, why don't you choose a record? You know, we listened to a few of the usual suspects and some familiar records, but he said, put something on, you know, you haven't heard in a while, you think might sound good. So I chose um, this. This is Belafonte Sings the Blues. And this is the Classic Records 45 edition. I bought this long ago and I like Belafonte. And I have Carnegie Hall and most of the other ones in the original pressings, but this one I never, um, I had never heard before the Classic Records edition. I subsequently found a um, um, an original living stereo of it, but this one is better. Um, it's much better. So we put it on and put on the first side, which uh, is a fool for you. Uh, starts off with a fool for you. I mean. Oswaldo doesn't take takes a lot to be impressed with something and uh, you know he works with very very expensive components and systems and people that have very expensive components and systems for me you know him coming over to see my modest system and try to make this work was really really gracious and even he was impressed with this um, reproduction of this voice um, I was blown away. My, I mean, I was kind of like jaw dropped, but I think he was too, but maybe he didn't want to say it so much. But, you know, even over the modest system with the, with the PH9, it transformed it into a high-end audiophile listening experience. And the detail in this record and the voice reproduction in this record is bar none. I mean, it's, for a male vocal record, I don't think you can find a better one. Um, the way this was recorded, very simple setups, very simple arrangements. I mean, even the lead off track, I believe it's just bass, just bass and voice. And if anyone can pull that off, it's Belafonte with complete charm and emotion and inflection 
and it was amazing. The whole record's amazing. And I believe there's a, an edition available. Um, you know, if you're interested in Belafonte, I, I know some people say, ah, Belafonte, I don't wanna, you know. They don't know, they, they just don't know. Belafonte is a consummate performer and an extremely good vocalist and very, very interesting all the time all the time and you know his his famous audio file record is at Carnegie Hall but this one this one I like even better I like even better because it's him in a blues format and he's singing these blues songs and it's just like it's just like he's lived them you know and it's a transcendent listening experience and I know Speaker's Corner had an edition out, probably the last ones that had an edition out of this, but do whatever you can to find a record, this record, because it will show you what your system can do with a male vocal. It's quite amazing, quite amazing. And I probably wouldn't have gotten this experience, and I probably didn't, uh, now that I recall before having the pH 9.0 in the system, it just brought um, an unprecedented degree of realism into the scene. So if you, you know, if you like Belafonte and you're interested in this kind of record, probably you can search out the original classic or the classic 45 which I recommend, I've heard. Um, I imagine the Speaker's Corner is nearly as good, um, but these uh, classics are from the original master tape, all analog. Um, the Speaker's Corner is all analog, probably from a copy tape. So there's that. But um, anyway, try to find a copy of this record if you like male vocals in a simple setting. You know, it's an astonishing record. It really is. And I've never heard it reproduced better than I did this weekend. So uh, that's it. That's my record to die for for this month. Uh, Belafonte Sings the Blues. Amazing, amazing record. So thank you for tuning in. Um, let me know if you've heard it. If you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.